About five days ago, I broke the tip of my key off in the ignition of my little 2000 uh, Miata that you see in the background there. Um, had uh, two different locksmiths come uh, through AAA to try to retrieve the uh, about a half inch long piece from inside the ignition. They failed. Fortunately, they did not charge me since they did fail. Um, <clears throat> so uh, rather than replacing the entire ignition switch and having two separate keys, one for ignition and one for doors, and all the hassle of um, replacing that switch, which is quite challenging based on what I've seen on YouTube, I decided to go the route of installing um, a switch panel uh, readily accessible on Amazon. Um, I've forgotten how much this thing was. It wasn't much, something like $12 or something. Um, <clears throat> it seems a very popular item. I've seen it referred to a lot in various YouTube uh, videos. Um, I was uh, rather frustrated at trying to find uh, good um, instructions on how to install it. Uh, so now that I've got it figured out after a couple of days of research, I figured um, being a, a professional teacher um, of math and physics uh, might be helpful if I tried to use my teaching skills to show you exactly how to wire this thing up. Uh, first of all, let me show you my diagram I came up with right here. Um, forgive the um, uh, mess of it uh, that it's in. Um, also, for a long time, in fact, until just minutes ago, I had thought that uh, BR referred to blue with red stripe. Turns out that that's black with red stripe, and the RB is red with black stripe. Uh, everything else, I think, is pretty clear. Uh, LB over here is light blue. Y, of course, is yellow. Everything else, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. Um, so, oh, and um, it might be helpful for you to see the wiring diagram, ignition wiring diagram I found online. So here's the ignition wiring diagram. Uh, I used that to initially figure out what needed to go where, um, specifically looking at the ignition switch diagram right there. Uh, keep in mind that the left and right sides of that diagram are actually one stacked on top of the other. Um, you can probably figure out how that works there. Um, notice also that uh, no place on this diagram and other diagrams I've searched, no place is there a relay between the ignition switch and the uh, ignition uh, and the starter motor. Um, I was a bit surprised by that. I suppose that the uh, switch in the ignition uh, key cylinder is must be hefty enough to handle the current because I could not find uh, a relay any place. Um, also, I have here, let me go over to it, I have here a diagram of the connector that you will pull out of the ignition um, of where the existing wires are. So I've got that connector dangling down under the car right now waiting for the uh, attachment of my switch mechanism. Okay, so back to uh, this. Hopefully I can remember how all this fits together so I can tell it to you. <clears throat> okay, first of all, I decided, and it's upside down, sorry about that, but I decided to use these two switches for the radio and for the um, uh, cigarette lighter, which I use as a uh, phone charger. Um, they are separate and uh, they can be turned on, the way I've wired it, they can be turned on even with the ignition off. Uh, once this thing is uh, fired up, and I have not tested it yet, uh, you will turn this on. Uh, can I do that? I'm hopeless left-handed. And when that is turned on, then little light there will light up, this will light up, hit the button, start the car, let go, that's it. Uh, to turn on the radio, you'll do that. To turn on the cigarette lighter, you'll do that. Um, and to stop the car, you'll simply do that kind of nice. But nice to know that you can turn the cigarette lighter and the radio on and off without having the ignition on at all the way I have it wired. Um, <clears throat> this switch came with a relay. I'm still not convinced the relay was necessary. However, there's no harm in using it. Whether it's needed or not, it can still 
be used. All right, the wiring. Other videos I saw did not clearly show what was going on here. By the way, this part here and the lower part here are two different pieces that are screwed together with one screw in the top right here. You'll have to remove that screw and take this guy off in order to get to the screws here and one just like it on the other side to attach these wires. So you'll take this off, stick the, uh, the clips into the slot here, same thing on the other side, screw them down up in the top here, once those are together, then put this back on and screw it back down with that center screw there. Uh, hopefully that's clear. Um, let's start with the ground wires. I've got a ground going from here to here, and from there it'll go to some source of ground on the car that I have not identified yet, but it'll be easy to find. That ground serves only to provide power to the uh, light in the LED in the tip of the switch and the light on the button itself. Other than that, they have no purpose. Now there's another ground wire that goes into the top of the switch here, the push button switch. That also is going to go straight to ground. Those are coiled together and come out here together. I have not tested this, by the way. If it doesn't work, I will quickly remove this post. If, um, if it uh, does work, uh, then uh, I'll leave the post. All right, um, for power, this right here is your main power. It goes around here, and I've got it coming out into WB, the white uh, white black connector um, in the wiring harness. Uh, there are actually two white black uh, connectors in the wiring harness. Uh, they both do exactly the same thing. It doesn't matter which one you use. This will go into one of them. The other white black I have going to the bottom of these two switches. And that winds around here and comes out as the other white black over the, it's here someplace. White black, white black. Okay, I lost it. Okay, that's a little weird. I have I'm supposed to have two white blacks. Um, I'll figure that out. Um, okay, something's wrong with my uh, designations here. Okay. This was supposed to go smoothly and perfectly, and it's not. Um, well, get back to you on that. Hmm, what have I done? Okay, uh, the bottom of these guys. These could both go into one that's called GR, green with a red stripe. Uh, that's the way it is originally wired in the car. But I'm going to try to separate them. That green, uh, uh, green red wire under the dash, splits off into the yellow Y, which goes to the lighter, and the LB, light blue, which goes to the radio. So I'm going to try to split those off to control the two separately. Otherwise, both of these could go into the same place. They would both go into the um, uh, GR, green with red stripe. Um, if I wanted to have these guys, the radio and the lighter, uh, controlled by the main power switch, then instead of running this to the alternate white, and here I'm forgetting again the designations, white, uh, oh, I see why I'm confused. It wasn't white black, I'm so sorry. It was white red. Uh, so I've got two white reds. There they are. It's the white red that supplies the main power. There we go. I was thinking white black, sorry, nope, it's white red. So the white red comes off of here, and it comes off of here. If I wanted these to be controlled by the main power switch, I would have routed this over to here instead. 
instead of taking it directly to power. All right, um, that's this side. The other side. Okay, you've already seen these two. These are the ones that will run to the yellow and the light blue, or that could be tied together and go to the green with red stripe. This guy, the black one, is going straight to the relay that came with the switch. The black wire of the relay going to the number, I've got it in the number four terminal on the switch. Then I've got the, let's see, what is this? This is another, uh, an, a power out from the main switch. This is the power in, this is the power out. The power out branches off to a number of places. One of those places is the bottom of this switch, and that only powers the light on the button, nothing else. So that is to power the light on the button. The ground for that is on the opposite side. You saw that earlier. Um, from here, the switched power, this is the unswitched power, that goes straight to the uh, um, uh, wiring harness in the uh, WR position. These guys, uh, these other three, one of them goes to the red side of the relay. Relay red directly to the switched side of the power here through this connector. The other two, I think there are only two others, yes, the other two are the uh, black with red stripe and red with black stripe. Those control um, the engine, uh, ignition, not uh, the, all the uh, electronics of the engine, along with things like power windows, headlights, everything else. They are interchangeable because they obviously both go back to the same point on the main switch. So all that stuff comes out of here. And so we have two WRs that will go into the two separate WR slots on the wiring harness. We've got the we've got the RG. Have I addressed the RG yet? What is RG? Uh, you might see it before I do. Um, I've lost the RG. Do you see it? Um, what in the world is RG? Is that really RG? Did I read that wrong? It's oh, it's not RG. I'm sorry. It's RB. That B looked like a G. That's RB. So RB is going to be this guy. Then we've got down here the BR, the other one I've referred to. And then the WB. Oh, WB, very important. WB is attached to the blue side of the relay. Blue wire from relay goes to WB. WB goes to the actual um, uh, starter motor. And I think that's pretty much everything. Trying to think if there's anything else I've left out that's important to you. Um, oh, um, if you, one of the manufacturers, one of the suppliers of this switch includes a wiring diagram for the relay. Uh, that wiring diagram is not correct. Uh, the way the supplier has the wiring diagram shown, it would put all of the starter uh, power right through this switch, which is exactly what the relay is trying to avoid. So um, my advice would be it'll work, but it will not protect your switch from the ex uh, excessive current. Um, so my advice would be to ignore that wiring diagram um, in, uh, from that particular uh, supplier, if it has one and um, go with uh, my arrangement here, which I have researched very carefully, and I am convinced with all my heart that it actually will work properly. Um, anything else you need to be aware of here? So the top goes to the relay there, that black guy. This guy here, the red one, goes to the switched power here, which goes into this. The um, 
other side of the main switch will go to the uh, hot side of that wiring harness, which is again WR. These two guys will either go to your uh, GR or to yellow and light blue separately if you so desire. This guy supplies power to the radio and the lighter. It will either go to a another uh, the the second WR in the harness here or if you so desire it can go into the switched side over here if you want the switch to control the power to everything. Um, and uh, again, I think I'm repeating myself probably, but the black ground wire coming from the relay goes to the top side of the switch here. The other side of the switch, oh, maybe I never mentioned it, I don't know if I did. The other side of the switch here, terminal number three, I have going again straight to my ground strap. Okay, hopefully this is a little more helpful than some of the other videos. Uh, it might work very nicely in conjunction with some of the others. And uh, that's it. Um, hopefully this is going to work. I'm about to go outside in the rain and find out if it works. Oh, uh, there's another video I saw someplace that shows how to remove the uh, center console trim panel. Uh, so that you can uh, get at the point where you probably want to install this thing um, rather than having it just dangling uh, under your feet. I also uh, rerouted the main wiring harness uh, from near the ignition key. I took it over the steering column and back through to get it closer to the point where I intend to mount the switch. Oh, and you'll also find two other little wires um, attached to the uh, uh, key um, uh, ignition assembly. Uh, those two wires simply control the beep, beep, beep when you open the door with the key in the slot. Um, I'm not going to be using the key anymore. I don't care about that. I disconnected it. That enabled me to uh, reroute the entire harness over top of the steering column. Um, so for, henceforth forevermore, the only thing I'll ever need a key for is to open the door uh, which, of course, does uh, open me up to uh, the possibility of uh, easier theft of the car. Uh, some have suggested a kill switch. That would be a, an easy thing to install. But I just don't like the idea of having yet one more switch I've got to hit to turn the car on. So I don't intend to install a kill switch. Maybe later on I'll put one in um, for those times when I park the car in a dicey location. Uh, but uh, I'm not gonna, at least I'm not going to start off with that. All right, uh, hopefully you found this to be helpful. Uh, I think the pictures I've shown you are a little more clear than most of the others I've seen. Um, you might be saying, show me the other side again. Okay, I'll show you the other side again. Um, there are those, I've got two wires going into the same uh, ground there. So again, this is ground that controls nothing but the little light in the tip of the switch. Um, goes to this that controls nothing but the light on the button and then that simply routes around to my ground strap along with the top side of the uh, switch here. If you think that my wiring of the relay is wacky, well I've been studying and studying and studying how relays work the various uh, posts, they're numbered 30 and 86 and 85 and 87, uh, which are marked on the relay, but so dimly that you can barely see them. But I've been studying those and studying them and studying them and have arrived at this as the correct way to wire it. You'll notice that the power from the switch goes into the relay, it's then uh, split off into two places inside the relay. That's the reason for that little white jumper here. This comes in from your switch, and then it also supplies the other side of the relay. Then one side of this goes through here and through your switch. That activates the relay. 
The other side is the other side of the red that goes through the main switch of the relay and out to the starter. So when you punch the button, it activates the coil inside the relay, turns the current on that is running only through your switch, through the relay, and out to the starter. It does not go through the switch itself. That's the very purpose of the relay, so that you don't have all that amperage from the uh, starter going through your switch and potentially, eventually, burning out your switch. Is it necessary? Perhaps not. There are other videos that show you how to wire it without uh, the relay. Um, and it works. But how long will it work until finally one day it decides to burn out your switch? I do not know. And that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope this is helpful. And goodbye. Uh, most of it I got at Home Depot. Um, a couple of coils of wire because I wanted to be sure I had enough. The wire that came with the switch I don't think would have been quite long enough to do the job. Um, I got the uh, crimping tool at Home Depot. It came with some uh, connectors along with it. Notice please, in case you've never used one before, uh, the red dots, the red dot, blue dot, and yellow dot, those are the different sizes to use with different connectors. Um, and that is what you use to crimp the connector onto the wire. Uh, works pretty well. Uh, they seem to be good, solid, tight connections. So I did no soldering. Well, not quite true. Um, in connecting the blue wire from the relay into a longer wire to get to the connector at the ignition switch, um, I had to um, uh, solder two pieces together. Um, and instead, I, I tried using one of these but I couldn't get it to cooperate, so I gave up on that and used one of these things. Uh, this, you put your two ends into the two ends of the of the dealer bobber here and heat it up with, I used a, um, they say you can use a, a hair dryer, or not a hair dryer, but a, a, what do you call it? A heat gun. Uh, I used um, the torch uh, feature of my uh, soldering torch thing and it uh, worked fairly well. Uh, I believe I got these online some time ago for a different project, and uh, they are in this box. Sopobi, never heard of them before. And you get a number of different sizes, and uh, there they are, I used the blue ones. Um, the, um, most of these connectors are available at Home Depot, or they came with the crimping tool. One thing that Home Depot did not have, I could not find these. Uh, these are very important. You need at least six. Uh, I believe I used more than six. Um, I don't recall what four right at the moment. But um, uh, they come in very handy for uh, connecting to the um, connector at the uh, ignition switch. Uh, what I've referred to earlier as the uh, wiring harness. Um, so you need at least six of those. Um, this I used at one point for my ground strap. Found out I could not find a post any place under the dash that was the appropriate size for that hole. So I did find a point though, uh, somewhere, I think it was near the steering column, uh, where I was able to loosen a bolt, slide this between the bolt and a little metal plate, and then crank it all down and it uh, worked very nicely. Um, these guys you'll use for places such as the ground of your main switch. Um, I also used one of these to connect to the hot side of the uh, cigarette lighter. came in very handy for that. I don't recall if there was any place else I had to use them. I don't remember. Uh, this one is used uh, a number of places. Um, I use these to connect to the uh, uh, bottom half of the uh, button uh, terminals where the ground wire goes in and the power comes in. Uh, there may be other points as well that this came in handy. Um, and I use this to connect my uh, like four or five uh, wires to the switched power. Uh, of course you saw that in the earlier video. Um, Anything else you need to know about that? Uh, this is the package that I found at Home Depot. Um, and this is the package that I... Oh, I don't remember if I mentioned it. They did. Okay, I have completed my installation, and it works perfectly. Uh, you might be asking yourself, 
Where in the world is the switch? Watch this. It's actually in the back of this cubby. I had to disassemble the console, which requires removing the five screws from here, uh, one on each side up front, one under the ashtray, and two inside here. Remove those screws, and then, as I saw in some uh, YouTube videos, to remove the console, you simply grab this guy on both sides and pull straight up like mad, and it will pop loose. Uh, then there will be two screws in here. You take out those two screws, and then very gingerly try to remove this uh, uh, bevel around here. Uh, it does not like to come out. In fact, in, during the process, I broke mine right there, so I do have some switch installation damage, unfortunately, but I'll get over it. Uh, from there, um, I just uh, kind of pulled really hard on, on this guy, and it popped out. Um, on the back side, there was a bunch of stuff, uh, things sticking out that looked like they were for... Uh, uh, unused connectors. Um, I took a, a hacksaw blade and cut off all the stuff from the back side, drilled appropriate uh, size holes in the back side. I would recommend using um, uh, wood bits, um, the spade type uh, bits. Uh, they worked really well um, to uh, drill my four holes. Uh, at first I was getting very frustrated that the main power switch here was not going to fit properly. Then it suddenly hit me I don't need to install it vertic vertically, it can be installed horizontally, and then it works just fine. Oh, and by the way, to prove to you, oh, um, when I first brought the thing out to test it, and simply plugged it directly into the wiring harness, and uh, I turned on the power, and I hit the start switch, and absolutely nothing happened, and I was getting very concerned, why is it not working? So I disconnected it, took it inside the house. Um, figured the only thing possibly wrong could, uh, could be the uh, relay. So I took the relay out and rewired it without the relay. Then I brought it out, plugged it back in, tried again, and this is what happened. Absolutely nothing. I was getting very frustrated and uh, concerned that I was it was going to be a total failure until it suddenly hit me. Good grief, uh, you idiot. Uh, I forgot that it won't start unless you press in the clutch. And there we go, it now runs perfectly. Um, so uh, don't forget to depress your clutch when you test your switch prior to final installation. Um, I put the relay back in and the relay works perfectly. And also my radio is controlled by the this guy on the left. There it is. On Sesame Street died today. And my um, uh, cigarette lighter, which I use for charging my cell phone, is plugged into the right switch. There it is, it comes on, and then it, you can't see from my jacket, it's cold out here, and then it goes off. Um, again, uh, this could have been wired directly into the hot side of the switch, um, or this, I should say, the switched side of this main switch, uh, but I wanted to be able to turn the radio on with the ignition off if I wanted to. Or better together. Or turn the charger on with the engine off. Either way, so I left it, uh, I took it directly to the power um, uh, side of the uh, wiring harness. Um, also, I discovered that it was better to uh, put the wiring harness in its original position, basically under the steering column. It was long enough, once I disconnected that beep, beep, beep thing, uh, it was long enough that I could route it uh, around under the uh, steering column and up inside. Uh, just make your uh, wires long enough from the switch that they'll reach to your uh, connector. Um, and uh, anything else worthy of note? I feel like there was something I wanted to mention. I do not recall what it was. I keep my old broken key here because the key can be used to turn the ignition and I don't want the steering column to lock up on me without me having the ability to unlock it and uh, get it um, get the car going again. So I keep the broken key in there in case the steering column locks up. Um, other than that, I think that pretty much sums up everything. Oh, the, um, uh, the lighter. When I took out the trim panel here, uh, along with that comes this panel. Um, 
I discovered the yellow wire I referred to earlier is exposed right there at the cigarette lighter. So all I did is took the little L-shaped connector off the back of the cigarette lighter, flipped it around the other way and put it back on so only the ground wire was connected. Then I took my Y-marked wire from my switch and plugged it straight into the uh, hot side of the um, uh, cigarette lighter and it works perfectly. That was very easy. Then it hit me that I don't need to find the uh, radio, uh, the light blue wire off the radio. Um, I have no idea where it is. I never saw it. All I had to do was put it directly into the wiring harness in its original place. What was that? I think it was GR maybe? Green with red stripe, I think. I'm not certain. But I had to uh, just put the, the remaining, the, the radio wire, my uh, light blue marked wire straight into the original spot that it would have gone into in the wiring harness and uh, everything works perfectly. Okay, and I do believe that's it. Um, I hope I haven't been so wordy that it's been uh, a, a tortu torturous, tortuous, whatever, trying to listen to this. Um, and I hope that things go well for you. Uh, thank you and goodbye.